and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as 4 Kids at 147. And I've completed the hexagon flower that I kitted up. So I wanted to show you what it looked like when finished. Um, and I am going to get this prepared to go into my um, folder binder that I use. Um, but yeah, quite fun to do, quite a bit of white. Um, but yeah, nice image. Um, to show you, I do have plenty of all of the colours left. They are not DMC numbers. They don't have DMC numbers, sorry. So it is just a matter of doing a match up with them at some point. But I have quite a few of each left if you, I don't even know if you can see it in the bottom of there probably not um but yeah never feared that I was going to run out of any of them but I do need to get this prepared for popping into my binder that holds all of my diamond paintings so the first thing I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to take all the washi tape off now normally I cut these with scissors but as you can tell, this one isn't square. So while I'm dealing with a flat edge and a row of diamonds at the top and the bottom, I'm not at the sides. So what I thought I'd do with this one, hence the craft mat, is I would use a knife on these to trim this one down and hopefully it will still look like a hexagon when I'm finished. So I'm just going to give this a go. It's how how hard I have to cut through to actually get through the canvas itself. I don't know if I've got the sharpest knife in this either. Oh, it's definitely cutting through. It's just not quite there yet. Scissors is so much easier. But hey. It's not a square, so what's a girl to do? Not sure if I'm actually moving my ruler as well. Probably doesn't help. Okay, maybe I need to get a better blade on this. Okay, so I've got a better blade on this. I've snapped one off. I'm actually going to try this edge first because what I might do is just still use scissors. On the other one so I'm just trying to get as close to the diamonds that are sticking out as possible oh that's much better okay use a sharp blade <laughs> I think I've been uh, using that for scoring top paper so much that I felt it was fine and obviously it wasn't so I'm just going to follow that all the way around getting as close as I can and of course my ruler will give me my straight line and make sure that you do have something underneath your work so in this case I of course have a craft mat hence my not necessarily clean because I probably use glue and all sorts on the top of this craft mat is on the top oh even that straight edge was easy enough I'll redo the bottom straight edge but, come on. Quite easy once you've got a sharp knife, isn't it? So much better. Gives me some nice crisp corners as well on it, which is nice. It sort of defines the shape. Or it does when I cut it right. Let's get myself a sharp edge, that done. And then I'm just going to give this a go again at the bottom. There. Let me try. Right, I've ended up with a few more frayed edges at the bottom, which is not surprising because I was shockingly doing it with a blunt edge. So if you do find that you find it very hard to maybe cut straight on a canvas, maybe 
a sharp craft knife is the way to go and I think I've got gunk on my scissors from cutting previous ones. There we go though. And I've just got a little bit of fluff there where it pulled. There we go. So that is my hexagon done. So let me grab a piece of black card. Piece of A3. Um, and I just picked this up in a pack from the range. And I think, yeah, so we're going to have, this is going to have to be what's classed as mine as a landscape one. So this is what I put in my landscape binder. Um, and then I need a tape and a smaller pair of scissors because I'm going to need to degunk those. But on this one, I think I'm going to have to put some tape on all six sides just to make sure that it stays where I want it to in the binder. And I'm just using bog standard double sided tape for this. It's not needing to be spray mounted. It's not like it's going to be hanging from a wall. It is going to be in a plastic wallet. So that in turn will keep it secure. I've got a little bit of overhang of tape, a little bit, a little bit extra. Okay. And then I'll get that lined up so that I'm happy with the sort of placement by sight. And then I'm going to peel it back probably do it in two halves actually and get it to peel off it's always oh doesn't stick super well to the canvas compared to the card because of the material but once you do flatten it down you do tend to find it sticks enough that it doesn't fall off so Get that one to flatten down and then once that's stuck I can then do the other half. You could of course take them all off and then just turn it over but I find this way easier because then I can be sure it's placed in the right place and if I do need to try and pull it up which it will allow for a, for a bit when you've first done it um, I'm not pulling as many pieces up before I'm sure on the placement. I'm going to say it does sort of like to just double back on itself. It is only tissue paper, but once you've flattened it down, that's not falling off. So it doesn't matter which way I shake it about, it's not falling off. So where is my landscape binder? So this is one of the binders that I use, the Array 3. Um, and these are all in backwards and I think that was just because when I first did this I did have diamond paintings um, in both ways so I did have portrait at the front and landscape at the back but I expanded into two and of course I took the portrait ones out and it wasn't worth moving the landscape ones about so I've still got all my landscape paintings there and there's my latest ready to view if somebody wants to have a look at it and of course this binder will get filled up no doubt over time but I hope you've enjoyed this sort of review um, I will be dealing with the diamonds from this kit um, in a future video I just need to get some bits finished off so that I can. But thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.